Uh, I do have to say that adding a scripting system will make your, you know, will make it easier for people to develop games, but that does not mean that it will not make it easier for them to also crash your game engine. Hey guys, I'm Jero Serrano and in this channel, I talk everything about game engine development. I basically share with you everything that I'm learning as I develop my own game engine. So if you want to learn a bit about game engine development, feel free to subscribe and join my Discord server. All right, guys, so let's talk about the topic of this video. What were the things that I learned as I, I embedded a scripting system into my game engine? The first one that was an eye-opener was uh, really that maintaining a scripting system is a lot of work. Uh, let me explain what I mean with that. So basically for you to embed a scripting system into your game engine, you need to uh, implement a bridge. And the bridge basically acts as a translator between uh, your scripting language, which is Lua, and your game engine language, which may be C++. It basically allows for the communication between these two languages to occur uh, properly. Now, the problem arises when you want to um, modify your game engine API. Either you want to add a new feature or you want to do some improvement to it. Um, so um, whenever you change change the game engine's API, you also have to change the bridge or the binding functions uh, API. And you have to also uh, modify the scripting system uh, API, which is exposed to the user. For example, let's say that you have a function, a method called rotate uh, in your game engine API, and you decide to add a, a new argument to it. Uh, now you will also have to add will modify the binding functions to include that argument. And you also have to modify your scripting system API to also include that argument so that the user can also use it. Now, if your game engine is small, that should not be a problem, but you can just imagine as your game engine increases in complexity and you keep adding more features. Every time that you add a new features to your game engine, you have to make sure to uh, remind yourself that you also have to update the binding functions and also the scripting functions. Um, so maintenance, guys, is an issue that you have to consider uh, whenever embedding a scripting system into your game engine. Now, the second point that I want to uh, bring up is the fact that um, many people will say, and I do agree, uh, that adding a scripting system into your game engine will make it easier for people to develop games. And yes, that is uh, correct. However, uh, I realized that making your game engine friendlier do come at a cost. Um, and, and, and that is a cost that you need to consider. For example, debugging your scripting system as it becomes more complex may become a hassle. And moreover, uh, your users may not be uh, experienced programmers uh, and you have to implement safeguards into your scripting system and in, on the, in the bridge. Um, so that uh, the, your game engine all of a sudden doesn't crash. So it will require more work from you to prevent users from um, using your scripting system incorrectly, which may lead to your game engine crashing or uh, memory leakage, etc. And again, that is something that you need to keep in mind. Uh, if you want to make your game engine friendlier, that is cool, that, that is, that's awesome. But do keep in mind that it will require a lot more work from you uh, behind the scenes to be, to make sure that nothing bad happens if your users uh, use your game engine incorrectly. And the third point that I want to bring up is that uh, your game engine may start having issues with the speed, which makes total sense uh, because like I mentioned, you are going to need to implement a bridge. And now the flow of information will have to go from the scripting system to the bridge and to your game engine. And also don't forget uh, the scripting languages uh, are usually a lot slower than languages such as C or C++. So there will be some lagging uh, that, you, that you will have to deal with uh, when implementing a scripting system into your game engine. All right, guys, I hope these um, three um, things that I mentioned um, helps you, um, you know, think about whether or not you should implement a scripting system into your game engine. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just sharing with you what you need to consider. These were things that I did not know about and I, um, you know, I just learned them as I went and I wanted to share them with you so that way you are aware. Aside from that, I do have to say that adding a scripting system will make your, you know, will make it easier for people to develop games, but that does not mean that it will not make it easier for them to also crash your game engine. Keep that in mind. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you. 
Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Also, uh, click the like button. It will help me with the algorithm. Please share this video with your friends. Uh, and also, join my Discord server. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you next time.